Good morning, guys. We're stopping in Green Things. I want to see if they have these Monsteras that I saw a couple of days ago, but we were in a hurry, so I didn't have time to really look at them. Okay, we've got Monstera Adansonii. And these are marked the Monstera Adansonii Blanchettii. There's several different Monsteras that look kind of similar in their juvenile form, and I have a really hard time telling them all apart. Like the Blanchettii, I think that's a more rare one, but I think sometimes it's confused with the Laniata. But at the same time, this also just looks like the narrow form Adansonii, so I'm, I'm not really sure exactly what I'm looking at. I love these Hartley Philodendron. Like, look at how beautifully they did that. I just think that is so lovely and look how nice and large the leaves start getting. Oh wow, look at that. Oh my gosh. Okay. Maybe I need to be staking mine up is what I'm thinking. I have mine hanging down right now. Or maybe, maybe I just need that one. Let's see. It is $59.99 Hartley Philodendron Totem in a 10 inch pot. Those leaves though. When they have leaves that big, doesn't it kind of remind you of the Syngonium Chia Pins? And let's see, how did they do these? It's just all, yeah, okay, so they're not like wrapped up and over or anything. You know how sometimes if you have a vining plant and it's getting really long, you have to like wrap it up and down and then have it going back up again? So these are all separate vines. Let's see, what do they have going on in here? Okay, so they're all just separate vines going straight up so they just have a lot of vines all the way around it do you guys have any of your Hartley philodendrons staked up like this we might have to start doing that huh if we want these big beautiful leaves we've got these monstera adansonii's these are 65 and they're staked up on a cocoa pole those have really beautiful leaves too Monstera Deliciosas will always be one of my absolute favorite plants. They've got some really beautiful ones on these moss poles here. They are $39.99. That's a good price for this size. And they've already got the pole in there. Here we go, look at this. See how different that is compared to the one we just looked at? And I think this is what they have marked as Blanchettii. A 10 inch pot, $65, Monstera and Sonii Blanchettii. There's more over here. That's a pretty leaf. And then here we have more of like the narrow looking one, and that one is also listed as the Blanchettii. But it's, I mean, it's much different, you know? So I'm not sure. I'm not sure what is what here. I kind of like this one because I don't have anything that's like it. Ooh, that's a fresh leaf there. That one feels like it's still hardening off. It's very soft. Maybe I will get this one because I don't have anything that's quite like this. And this one with the more narrow leaves is really pretty too. Like that one gets really gorgeous fenestrations. Look how big those are. You know what? I'm thinking I might go with this one. Okay, I'm gonna, I think we're gonna get this. All right guys, we're home now and I have the plant in our front room here. This is our office space, our home office. And I'm not sure what type of plant this is yet. I mean, what type of Monstera. It's not an Adansonia, like not a regular one. It's I think a Lechleriana or Lech, Lechleriana, something like that. Anyway, I'll put the name below of what I think it is. But if you guys, think that you recognize this and you think it's something different, then feel free to drop a comment below and let me know. So those fenestrations, they tend to be closer to the midrib and they're more like slits. They're more narrow and the leaves are larger. Anyway, I'm thinking it might be a Leclariana. Should I even show you guys this? I'm debating on if I should show you this. I kind of have a pet and I've been debating on if I should show you guys this or not, um, but I'm just gonna do it because she just arrived. And you guys are gonna think I'm crazy, but what's new? Come on, baby. Come on, you want some cashews? <laughs> so I was not sure if I should show you guys this because I know it's probably, I'm gonna get such flack for this. Um, this is our squirrel and she's been coming in here for a while. She knows her little, uh, her little pad over here. All right, hang on. 
So we've got cashews and oats for lunch. There, it's up there. What are you doing? What are you doing? I know you're so sweet. Look, I put it up here already. You're telling me I have to sleep again, huh? You, she, she's got dust bunnies stuck in her whiskers. <laughs> oh my gosh. So this is your first time meeting our pet squirrel, the agouti. That's her name, the agouti. <laughs> we named her the agouti from her fur because uh, it's kind of agouti colored. And she is a mother. She had some babies and we've seen the babies. They're, they're growing up, they're teenagers now but they come in our yard and she's been coming around for a year now. So she stops by for lunch every day. And if I'm here, then I'm able to give her some snacks. And she likes oats, she loves cashews. Oh my gosh, the first time I gave her a cashew, she didn't know what to make of that, but she was obsessed ever since. She also likes walnuts. If you give her nuts though, like walnuts, you know, cause cashews are legumes, they're not actual nuts. But if you give her an actual nut, you gotta send her on her way because she'll try to bury it in my plants. And I can't let her in the plant room because she'll tear up my plants. <laughs> and she'll try to bury the nuts that we give her in, in my plant soil. Oh, I bet you were probably in Michael's bathroom, huh? She tried to steal the garbage once out of his bathroom. <laughs> I know, she likes paper towels too. Sometimes she'll grab the paper towel and take it with her for her nest. You're so cute and pretty, aren't you? I slice the cashews in half too, just in case, because I don't want her to choke on like a big, big old piece of cashew or something. So I cut them in half first because she has an easier time with that. And she'll eat out of your hand, or you can hand them to her one at a time and she'll take them from you. So I actually met her because she was the one who was eating my succulents outside. She would eat, like, she would like treat it like a buffet and she would nibble off of each one. So uh, yeah, then I'd go out and find all my succulents, uh, no longer pristine, and they would all have bites taken out of them. And she still has eaten some of my lithops. Yes, she, she loves lithops. Did you finish? Huh? What, you want more cashews, don't you? Huh? Yeah, I know. You got that dust bunny still stuck on your whisker. Where do you want to go now? She loves laying down on the floor too because the tile's nice and cool and it's been hot outside. Like today is going to be 93. So she just likes to come in and cool her belly. Cause you know, rodents get really hot. They got hot little bodies. Do any of you guys remember when Michael and I were raising monarch butterflies inside the house in Maui? <laughs> what? What? You want more treats? I bet you want some walnuts, huh? You want some walnuts? Okay, hold on. Hold on, I'll get you some walnuts. Oh, shoot. What are you doing on Michael's chest set? Okay, come on down. Here we go. And occasionally I'll give her some seeds from melons. She really likes melon seeds. <laughs> oh my gosh, what am I gonna do with you? How is that? Do you want a cherry? Mm, I know, the oats are not your favorite if you can get nuts, huh? Nuts or cashews. <laughs> okay, so um, are you ready to go out? <laughs> are you ready to go out? What, you want more, you want more treats, don't you, huh? Okay, what do you want, more cashews or you want cherry? Come on, let's go to the kitchen. Don't worry, she doesn't jump on anything in the kitchen. <laughs> she stays on the floor. Okay, hold on, hold on, hang on. All right, all right, here you go. They're not gonna understand. They're not gonna understand you coming inside the house and eating cashews. <laughs> Going to the fridge and begging for cherries. Hold on, all right, all right, I'll get you a cherry. You want one cherry? 
She's gonna, yeah, did you see that? She rips out the stem. <laughs> That's all. That's all I've got. It was just the one cherry. That was your, that was your treat. I know you're gonna be looking for more. <laughs> you ready to go out? Do you wanna go outside? She's well trained. So she comes over to the door when she's ready to go out. You wanna go out? Good baby. And then she stands out here with the cactus, which I need to clean up out here. Um, this soil that's down all over the ground here, that's from her digging up the pot and burying nuts. So, um, but that's her standing up right there. <laughs> okay, I'm closing the door, baby. We do give her water. That's outside though. So there's a little bucket there she's drinking right now. And then also over here I have, oh, it's dry. Okay, see, I gotta refill that for her. Anyway, so that's why we have two. So she's got the big bucket out there of rainwater or the, it's like a long tray. Um, and then right here is another little, man, I gotta clean the windows, good grief. Um, so that uh, terracotta saucer, I normally have that full of water too for anyone who's thirsty who stops by. Um, like her babies or, you know, whoever else. We have some other little uh, ground, uh, round-tailed ground squirrels that like to come by too. Oh yeah, she's really thirsty. I'd zoom in if I could, you guys, but she's, I can't zoom in with this lens. She's right over there. There she goes. Well, I don't know what video is going to come out first, this vlog or the uh, plants I'm currently killing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm actually going to call it, but basically uh, struggling plants. I'll just show you here though too. Uh, this is a basil. For the life of me, I cannot keep basils watered. Like this thing dries out every other day. Yeah, I'm, I'll try to water it, I guess, right now. What the heck? I guess I'll take this to the sink and uh, try to try to keep that alive, at least till you guys get to see the plants I'm killing video. <laughs> I'll try to keep it alive long enough so you can see that I'm killing it still. So today I'm just working on simplifying a few areas of the house that I've been meaning to get around to. So I figured I would just vlog it with you guys. So I'm just going to be going through certain areas of the house with you guys and simplifying or minimizing certain things. Um, so one of them I wanted to simplify was our window sills. And that's just one of the surfaces that I would just really like to see perfectly clean and just have nothing on there. So I just have like some cuttings and stuff sitting up here aside from that basil plant that was here. So I don't want to have anything on my windowsill except for the one that's in my plant room but all the other windowsills around our house I want to have them perfectly clean so this one is going to be going outside and I'll combine that with the mother plant that's outside I'm just gonna set this here for a second and then I have this pot of watermelon peperomia these are uh, propagation leaves and I just don't even think I want to do this anymore like I f it feels like they already took to the soil like they probably have already rooted but I'm not I'm just not even into it so I'm just gonna actually throw those in the compost pile which I hope that doesn't hurt anyone's feelings throwing a plant in the compost pile but I I have three pots of these already and so I just I think I don't I don't want to propagate any more of them right now so that one's gonna be going outside too let's see we're gonna take that saucer away uh, this one was a gift. That's a little dragon fruit cutting, dragon fruit cactus cutting. That one I'm gonna put outside too. It's a good thing that Guti did not see the Finisteria up there because I bet she would have loved that. All juicy and delicious. Yeah, she would have totally eaten that. Okay, I just watered the basil and I also have these plants that were up there. Um, this one's actually dormant, but I give it a tiny bit of water just so it doesn't totally get desiccated. Like when I see, um, when I see the base, the codex start to shrivel just a little bit. Oh, this is the Dioscoria uh, elephantipes. So during summertime, during the hottest part of the year is when it goes into dormancy. So it, it kills off its vine and then you just have the codex. But um, you, so you're not normally, so you, normally you wouldn't water when it's in dormancy, but I just give it a tiny bit just to keep the codex uh, from totally desiccating. And then I have a couple of Haworthias that were also on the windowsill, but actually I've decided that these are two that I'm gonna go ahead and give up um, just because I do like to do a plant purge every once in a while. I just kind of check in with my plants, see exactly which ones I, I still connect with, which ones I'm loving still. And I have other Haworthias that I really love and then these ones, they're just kind of like, you know, I don't really feel that same spark with them. So I'm gonna actually unpot these and give those away probably. So 
that's what I'll do with both of those. So I'm keeping the pots because I got to reuse those, but I'll just um, sell those bare root or give them away bare root or something. I'll figure that out. And um, good thing, I've got some lithops up here. That one is all wild and crazy because it was on the windowsill and it was reaching and stretching for the light. So don't, don't do that. Don't do what I did. They like to have overhead light um, or at least as close as possible. Uh, that window doesn't get enough light for lithops. And then this one, that one was growing fine. Uh, but it's a good thing the agouti did not see those lithops in here because she would have eaten them like bonbons. Oh, I also had this little tiny cactus up on the windowsill too. So basically everything is getting taken off those windowsills permanently and nothing is going to be up on there. Um, so actually I'm going to wipe those down right now. Okay, we got to restock the rainwater for the agouti. I normally save water in these jugs, so I reuse these jugs. There we go. I'd, I'd feel really bad if she came back and there still wasn't water in there for her. I mean, they have the other watering um, tub over here, but that one's harder for them to get into. Okay, I've got my vinegar and water. I'm just gonna spray down the window seals, and I cleaned off all the rocks that were outside, all the minerals that were on the outside window sill. All right, so there we go. That's gonna make it so much easier to keep clean without anything up here. It'll just be an easy wipe down. I do have to clean the windows too, but I'm gonna do that um, after I get done filming with you guys. So I won't spend a bunch of time on that right now. Okay, we gotta stop in the plant room for a second here. There's a couple plants that I'm actually gonna be purging. Every once in a while, I like to go through my plant collection and just kind of check in on everything that I have and sort of do like a, a mental inventory and just see if there's any plants that are no longer bringing me joy. I like to trade plants out. So I actually do that pretty frequently. So they're kind of like mini plant purges. Just whenever I come across a plant that no longer is bringing me joy or I'm just no longer connecting with it for some reason. Um, I do have a couple of plants down here though that I decided finally that I would let go of. Here we go, I've got three begonias here and these are all beautiful begonias actually. I mean, I think they're really awesome plants, but it's just because I have such limited space and there's other plants that I wanna grow. So every once in a while I'll go through my collection and just kind of trade out plants. So these are three that I'm gonna trade out and I have a couple of other plants that I ordered um, from Ecuador. And so those, when those come in, those are gonna be kind of like the replacements. So, oh, look at that one. That one has like a wicked leaf coming under there. Look at the veining on that one. Holy cow, is that the, is that the um, Margaret Heppel? Yeah, it is, okay. And then this is the Mr. Miller. And then this is Whimsy down here. I mean, they're all three beautiful begonias, but I just decided, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and pass those on to other people to enjoy. They're all in good condition, I think. Um, but yeah, I just wanna make some more space for some other philodendrons and anthuriums that I've really been wanting. So I try not to have so many plants that I'm not able to keep up with caring for them. Um, so there's definitely a limit. So when I, I find other plants that I wanted to try out, that means that I will swap out other plants so I'm going to move these out to the living room because I'm going to list those and then someone can come and pick them up and adopt them, which I will be very grateful for. And then this one, the Margaret Heppel, which is another really cool polka dot begonia. And then this one, which is an, actually a beautiful grower, this begonia whimsy. That one is actually a really cool begonia. So I'm looking forward to selling those. Oh, uh, not the plant that's up here on the table though. Just these guys here, the begonias and this uh, euphorbia here. Um, so those are gonna be part of the plant purge. And I actually have a piece of furniture that a customer is coming to pick up in about a half hour. So I better get that out here too. All right, there it is, the vintage rattan bookshelf. I had that for a while. I really like it a lot, but I just didn't have the right use for it. You know, at first I thought I would use it for plants, but then I found out that spider mites love rattan and it's super hard to keep them off of it. So I decided, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pass that on to someone else who can use it for something else other than plants. Um, so that yeah, they should be here any minute to pick this up and I'm glad that it'll have a good home where it's gonna be used. 
Okay, I've got a customer on her way right now to pick up this yoga wheel, so hopefully she'll be here any minute. And I'm just kind of going through the house actually right now, I'm um, just gathering things up. It's just after Labor Day weekend, by the way, um, and I'm just doing a little bit of a sale of a few items. Um, the, oh, the plants, the polka dot begonias, all three of them sold. I had one customer, she was super stoked to get those, so I was really happy that um, that, that worked out. Okay, hang on one sec, my customer just got here. Okay, we're in the bedroom now and I was just sorting through a few things, just seeing if there's anything that I can let go of. I've got another customer that's coming for these throws. I just have this white faux fur throw and then this African mud cloth. Let's take these out here. She should be here any minute. I'll just set them up here for now. Okay, my customer just left and they picked up the throws. And so, so far I just have these items out here. Um, and what Michael and I are doing, actually Michael thought of this, he was like, why don't we turn this space into a workout studio? And so that is exactly what we're doing. And this is, you know, technically the living room, but we had our huge sofa in here and we were actually never in here hardly. Um, so we were almost always in our office part of the house here. So we we're almost always over here working. Um, that's Michael's desk over there and my desk. Uh, it's a little bit messy right now because we're moving stuff around right now. I'm still like organizing all that. So I'll show you guys that sometime. Um, so we're still kind of like moving a few things around here, but uh, we actually ended up selling our big sectional sofa. Uh, that was Michael's idea. So he wanted to move that out because he was like, it's huge. And we're like, well, okay, we got the opportunity to sell it. Someone really wanted it. And so we went ahead and sold it, um, which actually worked out perfectly because uh, they really needed a large sofa. They had a large space to fill and we wanted to open up our space. Um, oh, sorry, if you hear that noise, that is the air conditioning that just popped on. So we're totally opening up this living room space, turning it into our workout studio. And we've got our yoga mats out here. That's Michael's. That's mine. I was working out this morning. Um, so that is what we're doing with our living room space. So our split reed bamboo set, definitely keeping that. Um, my little floor poof there. Uh, it's just these items here and that lamp that I'm going to be moving. All right, so some of you guys had asked in my last Instagram Q&A if I would share a what's in my closet or kind of like like the organization of it, kind of what's going on because I have done declutters on clothes and stuff over the years. And so you're just kind of curious what exactly is happening in here these days. So here it is. I haven't shared anything in here for a long time, I guess. Um, it's been quite a while since our last declutter. I finally whittled it down and it feels so good when you finally just get stuff to the point where everything is being used and everything you own, you love. And occasionally you do find stuff that has either worn out or you find that you actually aren't reaching for it anymore for whatever reason. Um, and those items I do get rid of. So like I do have a few things down here, like these tops, it feels so light and you just know that there's nothing hiding, like there's no closets, closets full of stuff. There's no bags of clothes. Um, um, your wardrobe is super tight you know you don't have to have like a bunch of clothes that you don't wear sitting around and it just feels really good so while i don't go clothes shopping anymore or a very rarely let's say that i maybe buy a couple pieces of clothing if i need to like when a when a new season is coming up basically i only bring in maybe like two or three pieces of clothing a year and what i do bring in i make sure that it's something really special and i really curate my my wardrobe so I don't let anything, I don't let just anything in there. Let's just say that. Like I'm super particular about what I allow into my closet these days. And I don't just, you know, I, I'm just very careful. I'm very careful with how I spend my, my, my money. And especially when it comes to clothing, one of the main things I noticed about clothing and when I stopped buying clothes was how much money it saves you, which that probably seems pretty obvious, right? But it's just, it's one of those areas of our lives that can be a huge money suck, <laughs> like it, like a black hole, you know what I mean? Like it just, it, it can be like this never ending chase for, you know, cute clothes or cute shoes or something, which I do like, you know, nice looking clothes, but I don't want to have like a lot, you know, like I want very minimal amounts of uh, clothes in my closet and shoes too. Also, one thing that I stopped doing was going to thrift stores, which might seem surprising because a lot of times, you know, we talk about uh, shopping secondhand. And while that is an excellent way to save money, at the same time, it can kind of have a 
reverse effect sometimes if you're not careful. Like it, because items are cheap, uh, you end up sometimes with more, more stuff than what you actually need or want. Um, in the end and so I realized that I accidentally did that so uh, without realizing it you know shopping at thrift stores or just going in there too often um, I would find pieces and it would be like such a great deal and then I would end up with a closet full of clothes and but still like I don't know pieces that didn't like totally make me feel my best like I would rather spend a little more on one really nice piece than have 10 pieces that are just kind of mediocre you know that I don't really love as much but just bought them because they're cheaper you know and they and they happen to fit um, so hopefully that makes sense we all have our own styles and everything but I figure I would just get in here a little bit closer and show you guys kind of what exactly I wear on the regular um, I do like places uh, like REI I used to work at REI years ago before you guys knew me um, so I do uh, tend to still like to go to REI if I'm looking for like a good fleece or a fleece vest or something um, I also like these kind of tops these are their safari tops I'm actually wearing the white one right now so I have one in this nude um, kind of sand tone color and then a white one prana that's also from wait is that from oh that one is from summit hut another sports shop here uh, oh, and you guys want to know something funny. I don't have a lot of t-shirts because normally I'm more of like a tank top girl. I like my arms to be free. I don't like to be confined in clothes very much. Um, but I do have one t-shirt and this happens to be like my most complimented uh, piece of clothing in my entire wardrobe right here. Ready? Yes, it's my Gila Monster shirt. I got this actually downtown Tucson at a 4th Avenue street fair. A few years ago i get so many compliments when i wear that shirt everyone loves the gila monster so like rei uh, summit hut is another local kind of um, outdoors shop here and then lululemon i do like lululemon a lot i got hooked on their leggings um, years ago and they're so comfortable i literally have the same exact pair like the very first pair of lululemon leggings i ever bought i still have those and wear them every single winter um, and i also have like another pair of, uh, I call them sweater leggings from them that I absolutely love and I live in those every winter also. Um, so they have just like won my, they, they have won me over <laughs> with their stuff because I can trust that their, their clothes are going to fit me really well and they're going to last me a long time. Like year after year, I get to keep wearing the same pieces. Um, so it cuts down on having to, you know, replace pieces that wear out or whatever. So I really like their tank tops too. They're swiftly tech tanks. Um, they're really lightweight and breathable. They're just fantastic. So I do have like a few of those. I have like three of those tank tops, live in them all summer long. Um, like this, oh, this one is an REI tank here. I just throw that on over, over like some of my other tanks sometime if I want to double them up. Uh, for leggings, um, I already mentioned I like Lululemon leggings or aloe leggings. I do have a couple pairs from them also. Those are also um, really nice, really nice brand, very comfortable. Comfort is my number one priority. If it's not comfortable, I don't want it in my closet. When it comes to like little lightweight jackets, these Lululemon Define jackets are my favorite. They're so comfortable, they fit really good. So I have those in a few colors too. Wear those all the time. I have a couple of long sleeve white tops. Those are both totally different from each other though. One's a little bit thicker and warmer than the other one. This one's a little bit lighter weight. This is secondhand. I got this at an estate sale and it's basically a work shirt. So I do have like my work clothes kind of mixed in here too. Um, so I don't separate my clothes at all anymore, like doing a capsule wardrobe. I keep all my clothes together. So this is literally everything you see here is all for all seasons. So my winter stuff is combined with my summer stuff and I just keep it all out at all times during the year. I have a white fleece also from North Face and you could be like, oh, well, you've got two fleeces. You know, you could always downsize and just have one fleece. If you're really going like really strict minimalist then you can drop down to just one I guess you could do definitely do that um, but I wear both pretty equally so my rule is kind of like I only let go like I don't try to minimize I don't try to force minimalizing I just do it like kind of, kind of in a more natural casual way like if I'm not using something if I don't love it anymore for whatever reason then I cycle it out but if I use both items then I keep both and I don't even worry about it um, this is a lululemon defined jacket here I love that color I love those powder blues especially for winter time got a lululemon tank there that was another swiftly tech 
and then a Patagonia top. I've had that for years. I was considering letting go of this t-shirt. This came from the Tucson Cactus and Succulent Society and uh, it's not something that I wear like I don't know, like both Michael and I got one. This is one of those examples of like this uh, special occasion kind of t-shirt, you know, we just got it because we were supporting them. That is something that I probably, I don't know, I might let go of that because I don't know, Michael says just wear it as a workout shirt, but I don't wear, I don't work out in t-shirts. I only use tank tops. So I don't know, I'm, I think I might let go, might let go of that one. Oh, and this top you guys may have seen several times this winter because I wore it a lot. Um, that is by Kara. Wait, Carrie Tran? Carrie Tra, sorry. <laughs> I, anyway, I got that at REI. Um, it's a really nice, cozy, lightweight sweater. And some yoga pants there. And then in here is like my more wintry pants. So like my sweater leggings, um, a defined jacket, and my big jacket. Uh, this is an Obermeyer, kind of more like a ski jacket there. And then I just have my backpack and a purse hanging up there. And then up top, I just have um, accessories in this basket here. So I've got my scarf and I have some beanies in there. Um, uh, basically just like winter, winter accessories. And then underclothes and then I've got some sweater. Well, yeah, I got a sweatshirt and a sweater up here um, and three pairs of leggings up there. And then my shorts are in the very back there. So that's everything in my closet. And then for shoes, I have six pairs of shoes in here, uh, two winter boots. Um, so I've got like my vegan Uggs. Those are from Paj, California. And then those are Columbia's. They're kind of like little snow booties and <laughs> for winter. So I've got three pair of gym shoes and one pair of hiking or trekking shoes, the La Sportiva's on the end there, which I'm still kind of, um, I'm kind of mad about those because when I bought those, I bought them when we first moved here and I, because we were going hiking and stuff and I needed a pair of like actual hiking shoes and they're great. They have awesome tread and I love the way La Sportiva's fit, but the color, the color I'm kind of mad about because I don't love that color, but they had no other like neutral colors to choose from. So that's everything for my clothes and shoes. And like I said, the, the gym shoes, I'll definitely be whittling those down, but just naturally over time as they wear out, I'm just not gonna be buying any more shoes <laughs> until some of those are, are all done. So I hope I was able to answer your guys' questions about you know purging and decluttering and kind of like where my closet's at now. and. Um, like my thoughts on minimalism and like the wardrobe overall and kind of, oh, I guess colors. I didn't really talk too much about the colors because um, I did get a question about that and how I wear a lot of neutral colors. I do prefer mostly neutral or whites. Um, that's like my favorite or, well, actually wait, desert tones. I do love like really muted, softer kinds of colors. So if I do wear colors, it's kind of more like what you see up here. Well, actually, as I have this like bright mustard yellow here, uh, I do love like a, a golden kind of mustard yellow. Like I really like that kind of um, butter, what is that, like butternut or something? I'm not sure, it's got, wait, I got a hair on there. Um, I do love some of the warm tones, like the sunny kind of warm colors. It just makes me, I don't know, it makes me feel really good. I really enjoy those colors during summertime or winter time. And then powder blues, I do love my powder blues um, or desert tones like really soft muted desert tones uh, and lots of white so that's kind of like my my favorite colors there okay so hopefully that answers your questions about uh, if I have all neutrals in my wardrobe or if I have any color I do have some color I'm just kind of um, I don't know kind of particular I guess I was, I've sort of just always been that way though um, you guys let me know, do you have favorite colors that you gravitate towards or are you like, do you gravitate towards neutrals? So I know a lot of minimalists tend to gravitate towards neutrals because they go with everything and you can really simplify your wardrobe down really easily and everything easily goes together, you know, and it doesn't take, it takes like a lot of the thought process out of getting dressed in the morning, which I actually really prefer. Like I like an easy wardrobe. I don't want to have to think very much every morning about getting dressed. Like I don't, I don't want to spend time doing that. I got other things that I want to spend my time on other than thinking about shopping for clothes or what I'm going to wear every morning. 
um, I just like to simplify that process as much as possible. So even after doing a declutter, occasionally you might find an item here or there that you're no longer reaching for. And when I do, I just purge it out right away. So there's probably never gonna be another big declutter or big purge again, because everything's pretty tight. Um, so that, and I keep on top of it and don't let stuff in <laughs> to begin with. Uh, so it really, once you declutter and purge, it's really about the maintenance then and not falling back into like going out and looking for more, you know, more stuff because we're, we're trying to do the opposite, right? We want less stuff, less stress. All right, so we're in the plant room right now and I'm just catching up on watering some plants and also wiping down leaves, um, checking for any plant pests, anything like that. So minimalism really comes in handy without having to be extreme about it where you don't own anything. Like minimalism is never about not owning something or not having hobbies, not having a collection of something. It's actually more of just a tool that you utilize in whatever area of your life that you want. And it doesn't have to be something that's, um, that's so extreme that you just, go about your life like not doing anything or owning anything or having hobbies. To me, it's, it's never been like that. It's only about being intentional about the things that you do own. So as far as my plants go, I'm trying to curate a collection that I really enjoy growing. And right now I have just the right amount I also have some propagations that I'm growing out. And so whenever I do, like, you know, if I come across a plant that I really want or I want to import a couple of plants, um, I sell off some of my propagations first or I sell off some other plants first that I'm not loving as much. And then I'm able to, you know, include the new plants in. But I definitely make sure to keep a balance. And I did sell off some of the propagations that I did. I had made some uh, pots of skindapsis and sold those off. So I just swap out those plants first and then I have room for for new plants to try growing. So yeah, just being intentional about what you do let into the house or into your collection. Like say you got a plant collection, uh, you definitely don't want that to become overwhelming because it would take the fun out of it. And so I just try to pick and choose, you know, carefully what I let into the collection. And the minute that I'm not loving something, you know, I'll, I'll try to grow it for a while, but if I don't connect with it, then I just let it go to somebody else who can love it more than me. And that opens up a space for trying out a different plant to grow. And uh, you don't have to think twice about it, you know, like don't hang on to something just because you paid money for it, because if it's not bringing you joy, it's still costing you. So, you know, even if you're in your house and you're trying to curate a space and you try something out and it doesn't work, you know, pass that on to somebody else. Like I've had uh, a couple pieces of, of small furniture that I just recently passed on. Um, it, oh, you know, actually there was one piece that was in the hallway here. Um, I don't know if you guys saw earlier in this video, I had a little cart there. I actually sold that. So that was one of the small pieces of furniture I sold along with the, the arched rattan shelf. So I just cleared out, you know, actually a few pieces of furniture recently, and that just opened up a huge space. Oh, I gotta water my Monsteras too. Now Monsteras are something that I don't mind having multiples of, cause I absolutely love them. They are one of my favorite plants. So I've got two on this wall here. They both need to be watered. Um, and I've got one in the bedroom too. But I've got a package over here from Amazon that just came, and that is tree fern, which I can't wait to start using. I'm gonna be testing that out in my soil and see how the plants like it. Okay, while I was charging my camera battery, I was in the laundry room cleaning up our shelves and just seeing you know, seeing exactly what was up there and if there was anything else I could get rid of. And I found some fabric remnants and I've actually had these sitting around for quite a while. And so that just reminded me that that's something else that I quit doing quite a while back was going to craft stores or fabric stores. So I've held onto this fabric, I think probably for about two or three years now. And I guess Michael had put it up on the top shelf in the laundry room and I just forgot all about it that I had it. So I pulled that down. I'm going to see if someone else wants it, you know, for a project or something. So I will just like list it for free and see if someone else can use that. I also have some polyfill here. Um, I might save that in case I need to ship any plants or cuttings or something. I don't know. Um, so that is my plan for that stuff. So I still have a lot of work to do around the house, just looking for other ways to downsize and minimize stuff. Um, so it's like a, it's a work in progress for sure. But just as an example, you know, coming across some things that you've totally forgot about. Like I still do that. So I still have a lot of work to do and uh, it's a, it's an ongoing process. 
process to you know really clear everything out all the nooks and crannies from all the closets or shelves around the house and i've actually been able to save so much money by not going into craft stores and fabric stores anymore i mean if it's your hobby and something you're really into like you're really into sewing or making your own clothes or something that's totally different you know when it's your your true hobby and something you're really passionate about but for me it was just kind of like a little side thing for fun you know do some projects on videos or or oh buying paint too oh my gosh like buying paint painting supplies you know furniture makeovers and stuff like that um, buying the hardware that's also something that i stopped doing so craft stores fabric stores and home improvement stores for uh, DIY purposes. Um, that actually stopping all of that has saved me a huge amount of money that I've actually been able to just save instead. So while doing DIY videos was really fun and I really enjoyed making them, um, I'm really glad that I actually stopped doing them because it was costing you know quite a bit of money to buy all the supplies every single time for every project. And I was left with so much extra, you know, so much extra like fabric remnants or crafting supplies, and they would end up just sitting and collecting dust um, after the project was done so I felt like I was kind of being a bit wasteful also like if you do it just like on occasion that's one thing but if you're doing it like all the time or trying to do it on a regular basis for you know making videos or something it was just becoming too expensive for me and I just couldn't keep up with that so that's one way that I've been downsizing and minimizing is by no longer purchasing DIY supplies or going into craft stores fabric stores or home improvement stores for uh, painting and um, you know furniture makeover supplies and stuff like that, uh, hardware and things. So that has been a huge way that I've been able to save money really quickly by stopping all of that. Oh, and one other thing that I don't do anymore is going to home goods all the time. I used to love home goods. Well, I should say I still really enjoy home goods. I think it's a really fun place to find home supplies if you're in need of them. But I'm just at the point where I just don't need anything. And so I don't want to add anything if I don't, if it's not something I actually need. Anyway, so I love organizing and minimizing and downsizing still. It's still something that I find helps keep balance in my life and it just makes me feel really light and good and I, I just love the vibe of a really clean room. Doesn't it feel good though to downsize and just kind of clear out the clutter from your life? I just feel like it does so much good for us, you know? And one of the things, now that I'm standing in here looking at our room, one of the things I don't purchase anymore uh, is pillows, like throw pillows. And some of you guys might find that hilarious because back in the day, like the old school being so foxy days, my early days on YouTube, I used to be a pillow hoarder. Like I loved throw pillows. I had all kinds of wild throw pillows, leopard print and pink. And um, that was a lot of fun back then, but I'm just at a different point in my life where less just feels better to me. And I just love the light, uh, airy feeling of just owning less things um, in your space. So anyway, all right, I feel like I've talked your guys' ear off so much in this video that I better let you go now. So let me come back into the plant room here. I have some more plant watering to do. So I will let you go for this video. I love you guys. I hope you have an awesome week and I will have the next video out as soon as possible. Um, as soon as I finish editing this one, I'll get working on the next one. All right, love you guys, bye.